live from New York. It's Warp Electronics with Becky Stern. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. It's August 20, what, 6th? It's the 26th, and, yeah. And we're live at the Adafruit Factory in downtown New York City, fashion yeah. electronic capital of the world. It is. And um, with me is Phil, Mr. Lady Ada himself. What's on today's show, Phil? On today's show, I'm glad you asked. Um, we have a lot of stuff going on. First off, congratulations. I know we're doing this for all the shows, but happy two years once oh, thanks. again. Yeah, I'm happy doing, four and six. Yeah, and then 3D And then Hangouts 3D Hangouts is one. one. Yeah. Um, we're a big family with four kids, ages six, four, two, and one. Those are not bad years. They'll all be in high school together. Um, <laughs> we have Wearable Wednesday. Oh, we're going to debut a video about sewing the perfect NeoPixel circuit. Component of the week. We're going to talk about a whole sheet of sewable NeoPixels. Get your project off the ground. Material spotlight. Because you haven't heard enough about conductive textiles. Can you tell the show has a theme today? There's a theme. And question and answers. You have questions, and Becky has answers. If you have wearable questions, you can post them up in the comments on the live show, the archive show, any of the other YouTube videos, the Adafruit blog, Google+, Twitter, all those places. We'll round them up and answer them on a future show, making you eligible to win the show's giveaway, which today is a copy of Getting Started with Adafruit Flora by me and Tyler Cooper. That's right. Speaking of which, I didn't put this in the show, but I'm going to say it now anyway. I'm giving a short book talk at Maker Fair uh, on right. September 26th, that's Saturday, about getting started with Adafruit Flora. Um, and um, I'll go over the projects in the book and yeah. uh, sign some books if you want to stop by and say hi. At 1 p.m., I think. Also, I don't know if you knew this because uh, I wasn't on the show last week, mm -hmm. but Adafruit is now a media sponsor for Maker Fair. Yeah. So we'll be at Maker Fair. There'll be lots of different people at Maker Fair mm -hmm. from Adafruit. And we'll be covering the event and more. Yeah. And so we'll have some things going on with Windows IoT, 3D mm -hmm. printing, mm -hmm. um, running around uh, covering the event. Some periscoping, maybe? Some periscoping. We're, we're par broadcasting on Periscope now, also, if you'd like to check out the Adafruit. Yeah. Twitter for the link, you can get the camera angle from over there. Yeah, if you go on to Twitter, you can see kind of a behind the scenes mm -hmm. as well. OK, well, let's kick this off. Um, one thing, um, we don't take sponsorship. and. We don't have ads. Mm -hmm. We have no loans and no venture funding. So your orders is what pays the bills here. Um, sewable is to code today. Yes, because that's the theme. The theme yeah. is sewable. 10% um, off all the way up to 11.59 PM Eastern Standard Time tonight, except for gift certificates and software. Please, all Adams. Yeah, please pick up a kit or two. Adams okay. in the shop, 10% off. Or Wednesday. Wednesday. Every week on the blog, all of us Adafruiters contribute some posts about wearable electronics, customer projects, industry news, um, tutorials from the learning system. And uh, so if you're, if you're not already checking out the blog on Wearable Wednesday, it's a good place. We just sort of show some of the highlights uh, on the yeah. live show. This is uh, Brian Ressler's this is amazing. trench coat. Is, yeah. You may have seen it before. He's brought it to Burning Man a couple years in yeah. a row, but he's been like ever wor like working on it, making new versions. And the latest update we have, it's called the Anthro Loom. Anthro this Loom. is incredible. He's a blog about making this trench coat. Um, and he brings it to Burning Man. He's got 150 new animation modes. Yeah, That's is, what you're seeing right now. It's on a mannequin with a hat on. It's pretty funny. Um, I thought I like he was this. holding really still. No, no, it's a, it's a, it's a mannequin. Um, how else do you work on this thing, right? Like it's so big and heavy, and it has like a giant battery pack. Yeah. Uh, and the, a lot of people want to make like a video coat like this, and like they're like, how do I make a video coat? Well, check out Brian's blog. He's been blogging about his video trench coats for ages now, and um, you, ha you have to be really dedicated to make a project like this work and work well. And um, Brian is, so good job, dude. Okay. He, he wrote in to tell us about it. He's like, in case you're not sick yeah. of hearing about it yet. And it's like, are you kidding? I'm not sick of hearing about your awesome LED trench coat. This is um, a project Jess blogged. It's, uh, it's by a person whose name is very hard to pronounce. Ezgi Uker. Uker. Yeah. It sounds, what am I going to guess, Turkish? I don't know. I have no idea. It's a dance costume for um, interactive performance about a shaman eclipse. It uses a teensy XB radios, proximity sensors, and some LEDs. And then um, if you go to the next slide is a little, a little video with it, with the audio should be nice and low um, for, what really it, cool. for what it sounds like. This is like a top view of the performance, and it's supposed to describe a shaman eclipse, and it's got sounds with um, Ableton Live yeah. making the sounds. I like that um, the barrier of entry for all of the types of projects like this is lower and lower and lower. Mm -hmm. Like before, it was like only a, a couple of professionals could do uh, wearables yeah. with some type of performance. Live interactive performance. dance. Yeah, yeah, with like XPs and all this stuff. Now right. it's getting um, really low. Uh, there was a quote from um, Skrillex. Uh, yeah, I know. And he said, isn't it great that people are saying it's, um, it's too easy to make electronic music with computers? 
Isn't that cool? It is great. No, it's totally yeah. great because what it does is like, um, and, I, and I, I call, um, like on interactive dance performances especially, maybe yeah. we can go back to the shot that doesn't have the sounds on it. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a, like, because it's so easy, it raises the, uh, I don't know, I would say like when only a few people were doing interactive electronic dance costumes, they got to say like, look at my fine art, it is so yeah. fine art. And I went to fine art school, so I get to, yeah, I get to get call. To, you like, get to wear the beret and smoke a cigarette and have a little, and have a, opinions. A little cappuccino. <laughs> yeah. And, um, um, it's, Complain about fonts. <laughs> Right, and because nobody can can ma like match your technical achievement, then they possibly yeah. couldn't possibly like attack your artistic yeah. uh, ideas or whatever. And it's kind of yeah. like a shield to hide behind when yeah, you're using yeah. really high tech tools. Oh, we like uses very high tech tools. Yeah. Well, by now your your like art wall wall text often includes like what microcontroller you use, not just like electronics yeah. components. And that way, like it, um, I don't know. Everybody's vocabulary about interactive art is is becoming more. It, it's and it's getting better. Is the then other thing the art gets better. Yeah, it's not like I'd say other mediums where it gets worse this is there's more people that normally couldn't do projects like this and it's getting better right it's getting better because there's more to choose from when yeah. you're a curator and it's just yeah, yeah so more I don't know. more diversity of thought and art okay our debut project this week is um, how to sew your perfect NeoPixel circuit. So one of the first tutorials on the Adafruit learning system we made in the wearables category was about the sewable NeoPixels. And yeah. they've been upgraded versions. Flora and Gemma have upgraded versions. And um, I gave this guide uh, overhaul this week, and we made a special video about using conductive thread and NeoPixels. All right, here we go. So you want to stitch the glowing circuit with conductive thread, huh? That's great. Today I'm going to show you how to stitch up the perfect NeoPixel circuit using your Flora or Gemma microcontroller. Let's get started. These sewable NeoPixels have the same addressable RGB LEDs as NeoPixel strips and rings, but the circuit boards have large pads designed for stitching with conductive thread. For just a few pixels, two-ply stainless steel thread works great and is a bit easier to wrangle than the thicker three-ply, which I'd use for any circuit with more than five pixels. If your project has more than 20 pixels in it, you should upgrade to silicone-coated stranded wire. Choose a needle that fits through the hole but whose eye is still large enough for the conductive thread. Another important tool is an embroidery hoop. This will keep your fabric taut so it's easier to work with, resulting in a cleaner finished project. If you're working on a heavy fabric like a winter coat, you could get away without one. I always stitch the center data lines first, then follow up with the power and ground buses. Before you start stitching, mark where your components will go with Taylor's chalk, a disappearing marking pen, or sewing pins. Decide which side of your fabric you want your knots to be on and pierce through the fabric with your needle and pull it almost all the way through, leaving about a three inch tail for hand tying later. Stitch around the data pad on your Flora or Gemma a few times, then continue over to the input of your first pixel. Make short stitches by bringing the needle up and down through the fabric at close intervals. This is called a running stitch and is the most common stitch you'll use for hand sewing with conductive thread. Patience is key here. Big stitches can be very problematic later on. Stitch around this pad several times, very tightly, and even tie a knot here before stitching back towards the origin to tie the ends together. Over time, the springy steel may loosen and cause intermittent connection problems. Stitch back to the tail you started with and tie the ends together in a square knot. It won't stay tied, however, unless you glue it. I use clear nail polish for this, since it's easy to apply, dries quickly and clear, and holds firm over time. I haven't found another glue that shares all of these properties yet, but I have seen super glue, hot glue, and Freycheck all fail in one or more major categories. As it's drying, keep tugging on the thread tails to keep the knot tight. And when it looks like nothing's moving anymore, you can sew another data line from the output of this pixel to the input of the next. But don't trim your thread tails yet. After the data connections are done, it's time to stitch power and ground, each of which are done using one long strand to connect up all the positives to V out and all the negatives to ground. Tie your thread tails into knots nearby, but not directly on the circuit boards, so that no adhesive gets in the way of the electrons flowing from the board to the thread. Now it's time to test the circuit. Trim your thread tails and clean up your workspace so there aren't any stray bits of thread hanging around. Plug in your microcontroller over USB and then load the NeoPixel sample sketch using the Arduino software and watch your fabric circuit light up. Refer back to this technique when you're making projects like the motion-activated sparkle skirt, 
Pac-Man pixel suspenders, Cortana costume, or any of our other conductive thread wearables projects you can find on the Adafruit Learning System. Thanks so much for watching, and if you have questions, post them up in the comments, and I'll tackle them every week on our live wearable show. Don't forget to subscribe to Adafruit on YouTube. And we're back, and for the folks who are on Twitter and tuned into the Periscope, they can see what we do behind the scenes. We rip off our masks, we're reptiles underneath, and we eat canaries. Shh. You have to go on Periscope oh, to find that out. I was supposed to say that out loud. So if you're, um, if you, there's never been a better time to get started with sewable NeoPixels, and um, I believe true. I believe we have 10% off of them today, so you can get as yeah. many as you like you in the can store. Use a code, and that, that gets you 10% off, and it keeps this um, keeps the lights on. It keeps, keeps this thing, the Periscope on. It, it keeps this thing going. Okay, so uh, Becky, w there's something I have to give you. Um, what? Yeah, it's, uh, we've been waiting for this for a really long time. Um, there's a UPS delivery guy that, who lives underneath here. <laughs> we've been tra we trapped Ooh. him like years ago. So this is a box, and uh, congratulations. It has um, my name on it. It has your name on it. This is something uh, very special that we've been uh, working on for years. And uh, you and I worked on the Make YouTube channel together. And uh, we've been working on the Adafruit YouTube channel for a while. And three and a half years. Three and a half years. And they um, promised us something, and now it is here. Is this really what this is? Yeah, I mean, we worked this out before the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to act surprised? Yeah. OK, this is from Susan, the CEO of YouTube. You just said something very, uh, very few YouTube creators accomplish. You have astonishing 100,000 people subscribed to your yeah, channel. Ooh, look, Phil, it's our silver play button. OK, so finally, and we're going to be wearing it around our necks for a couple weeks. You're not taking it out of the frame. <laughs> it's not coming out of the frame. Yeah, you can yeah, take yeah. Lamore's <laughs> EFF Pioneer Award out yeah, of the frame. That. It says, congratulations for surpassing 100,000 subscribers, Adafruit, and it has a silver That's great. play button. And then, oh, can I uh, check this out? Yeah, so you want to take it out of yeah, the box? Yeah, let's take it out. And then we won't touch the part, but we're going to hang this up. So here it is. We waited a long time for this. Yeah. Ooh, Here it's so go. nice. You can see the reflection of our camera yeah. in this. Here in you the... go. All right, well, here's to many more. Congra nice. Congratulations. High five. Okay. Yeah, oh, wait, do the, well, do, do the FBI thing, like, where, where they, like, no, shit can, like, go that way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, I'm in Silence of the Lambs at the end. I think, like, it gets a check or something. So cool. It was one of the other ones. I think. It's well, there's so many <laughs> awards back here, and, like, like. Yeah. It's working out. Made out of like stone and yeah. glass and all kinds of things, and I haven't I haven't contributed significantly to any of those. Yeah, but most, this one. Most of the awards we three D printed ourselves. Like, yay, we didn't give up award. Okay, I'm gonna hold it in the lower right hand corner of the screen. Okay. Lower left hand corner of the screen for the rest of the show. Yeah, and people can press on it. Bonk, bonk, subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe. Or you can subscribe. go and edit it later subscribe. and have it subscribed. To subscribe. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yay. Okay. All right. Well. Thanks, guys, for subscribing to our channel. It means a lot to us. And. Um, uh, the award isn't the thing we look forward to. It's actually the number of like the. It's just a. It's just a marker. Yeah, it's a. It's. It's a. It's a checkpoint along the way that we know that what we're doing is interesting, for folks. So. Okay. It's a pretty nice box. Too. All right. Next up. Great. Moving right along. Component of the week. Component of the week this week is. Um, I just wanted to figure out a way to talk more about the pixels, and. Um, we haven't ever done this as component of the week before. This is the sheet of 20. So oh, sheet. you can get. <laughs> That's much better I've, than my asparagus I've joke. Wait, I've, been, I've been waiting the whole show to do this. Um, so you can get your Flores Oval NeoPixels in a sheet of 20. This is like straight off of the uh, hot off the oven. And um, yeah. there, you can save a little bit by getting 20 at a time. And um, that's really fun if you're doing a project that has a, a ton of yeah. pixels or you just want to stock up with our discount code. Yeah. And um, here's what the sheet looks like at a non-oblique angle. And then if you, if you only want a couple, you can, of course, buy the, the different product ID is just a pack of four of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you're not quite sure about your pixels yet. But they're addressable, chainable with one wire or conductor thread. And um, you know any color you want. RGB LEDs, flashy flash, blinky blink. We have many, many, many projects linked on the product page for these uh, on the learning system. They're one of my favorites. Yeah. OK. Uh, here we go. Material spotlight this week. Conductive textiles. So yeah. uh, I wanted to sort of hinge on our discussion earlier about our debut video with the, with the conductive thread song with NeoPixels and give you guys a refresher on what the other conductive textiles in the shop are good for uh, besides just sewing NeoPixels. And we're going to show the video about that. Okay. 
shiny and conductive textiles. They're great for sewing flexible circuits, adding sensors and switches to your clothes, and all sorts of other wearable electronics. Today we'll explore all of the conductive textiles available at Adafruit. Let's start with conductive thread. All three of these flavors are made from stainless steel, which won't oxidize over time like silver will. Our thin two-ply conductive thread can go in the bobbin side of a sewing machine, with plain thread up top. Our three-ply conductive thread is great for hand sewing. It has a lower resistance than two-ply, so it's ideal for long power runs to faraway NeoPixels. We also have conductive yarn, which is soft and fuzzy, perfect for making a pair of touchscreen gloves or a knitted stretch sensor. For powering a lot of sewable NeoPixels, we use many strands of three-ply conductive thread together, held to the fabric with a zigzag stitch. You can use conductive thread to make a zipper switch to activate your TV Be Gone jacket. You can tape a piece of conductive thread to either side of a piece of Velostat for a durable and inexpensive pressure sensor, like in these Firewalker sneakers. It comes in our beginner LED sewing kit, which is a great way to start exploring with this fun material. For even more power delivery, take a look at our stainless steel conductive ribbon in both narrow and wide. Onto the fabric. We have three flavors of conductive fabric, all of which are silver or silver plated and may oxidize over time. Still, your project should be fine for a year or two. This woven conductive fabric is shiny and stiff. We use it with iron-on interfacing to make the buttons for this plush NES controller. Conductive fabric is great for capacitive touch sensing. These two types are knit, which means they're stretchy and soft. This jersey type isn't even that shiny and looks just like t-shirt fabric. Conductive fabric also blocks certain radio frequencies, so you can use it to block unwanted cell transmissions or to protect your RFID bank card. This is stainless steel fiber. You can use it in your felting projects to make buttons and pressure sensors. And this is conductive hook and loop. It's great for making switches at the closures of your book bag or jacket. We're always testing new materials to bring you the best conductive textiles available. Check out our eTextiles projects on the Adafruit Learning System and subscribe for more wearable electronics from Adafruit. All right, we're back. Look at that yarn. I'm just snuggling it a little. Yeah. Is that okay with you? It's fine. It's just so it, shiny. It took forever, so it's that's so why it's shiny. like it's so special. I know, even after we got the, um, the even though we passed 100,000 subscribers, like the way you get it is one of those like pop-ups in the in the back end of your um, YouTube management account. And like we, we talked to our, we have like right. a YouTube rep yeah. and they're like, you should see the pop-up. And like we didn't see the pop-up for a long yeah. time. So anyway, right. um, it's here. It came pretty quickly after we actually ordered it. Um, okay, so that's conductive textiles. We have a lot of them in the shop. There's your reminder about what they all do. Um, if you have cool conductive textiles projects, we want to see them on the show and tell and um, ask your questions about them because yeah. I'm ready to answer them. Okay, um, just a reminder, code sewable all the way up to 11.59 p.m. means our standard time tonight, 10% off. Let's do some questions and answers. Bex? Okay, the uh, silver play button will be answering all the yeah. questions today. <laughs> we'll have a puppet main. It'll be a silver play button. Okay, first up, this is from... Cat coffee. I love cat coffee. Um, I was wondering if some. You know what? Cats should never have coffee, by the way. No. Um, I was wondering if someone could do me a favor and extract just the rain portion of the code from the Florabella project. I'm um, new at coding and have tried and failed many times at isolating. I built the Florabella without the color sensor or button. I just want the rain pattern pattern when I turn it on. Perhaps this has already been done and someone can point me. Sure. To it. Yeah, and. Um uh, Rick in the forums already answered this forum question for you, Cat Coffee, but for all of the rest of you who want to know the answer to this question, um, the Florabella and many of our other NeoPixel projects, they have, um, there's the setup for the Arduino sketch, the loop for the Arduino sketch, and then there's functions that describe the animations. And then inside the loop, you just call those functions. So what you maybe were doing was, was like deleting important parts of the of other functions that the whole sketch needed and then getting confused when it wasn't compiling. But you can just leave all that stuff in even if you don't ever like call the color yeah. animation or the rainbow animation. Yeah, you can also just comment stuff out and then experiment. Like, right, but you can leave that. it all in and yeah. just change what's in the loop like Rick suggested you do here. So yeah. you just change the loop portion of your code to this where it just calls the rain function and that's it. Work. And then even though there's the still the animation for the rainbow and still the animation for the color sensor, it's not ever accessed. It just exists there in memory. So unless you're running up against a space constraint, you don't need to delete or comment out any of that stuff. You can just change your loop to um, X to call just one of the animation modes. Okay. 
Speaking of cat coffee, so last night, because we, Lamar and I do um, from the desk of Lady Ada from yeah. home, yeah. MOSFET made an appearance on Periscope because we can't have MOSFET at a factory. At the factory now. So anyways, okay. Next up, this is from James. Hi guys, has anyone used LED Amplify outside, perhaps a music festival where there's lots of noise? I want to use the same concept, however, just add more LEDs, more suited for my application. Will there be too many, oh, too much interference? Um, mostly interested for the LED to light up for deep bass. Any experience? Thanks in advance. Sure, here is the, um, the view meter You're hat. Just that is the same code as the Amplitude, but with 72 LEDs instead of 16 or however many. Yeah. And um, on a hat, and this is me at a music festival in Coney Island a couple weeks ago. Um, and as you can see, it's kind of like maxing it out most of the time, but there is yeah. some play there on the third section of the LED strip. Yeah. And, uh, and it was really loud. So um, I would say go for it. And then in the code, you can always tweak it. The thing about the, um, the Amplitude code is that it tries to sample, it's like, it adjusts, tries to adjust the um, light bar relatively to the volume that's happening. Yeah. So even if it's loud, it should accommodate to the loudness and then um, react accordingly. If you're right next to the speakers, of course, the microphone's going to get blown out, but yeah. you can adjust the gain on that. Um, but yeah, it's all in the code that you're going to change up. And so you can actually make it more or less sensitive to certain frequencies if you get into the um, sound math in okay. the code. But yeah, totally go for it. Here's what my at looked like at a music festival. Everybody loved yeah. it. Not could as work much with the having unit. something that identifies Coney Island in the background. That's key for videos because it could have been anywhere, but that's clearly not anywhere. That's clearly one place. Good work. It's clearly the Brooklyn Cyclone Stadium for the yeah. Mad Decent Block Party. All right. Next up. This is from Little Nerd That Could. Hey, Adafruit, I don't know which board to use for my locker project. This year I'm going to put a bunch of cool LEDs and such inside my locker and it will be turned on by opening my locker. Which board? Should I use choices, choices, choices? So many choices. I think you should start with the Chibitronic circuit stickers because I think that um, the lockers are usually painted, right? So like check to make sure that your locker surface is painted and not conductive first. If it's raw metal, then you're gonna have to insulate it from your circuit so that not everything is connected together. And then if it is if it's painted and not conductive, you could use the Chibitronic circuit stickers and the copper tape like right on the surface of your locker, which could be cool, and make a copper tape switch that gets activated when your when your locker opens and closes. Um, and then you can also control the Chibitronics LEDs with a flora or a gemma, um, which you could probably attach with a magnet on the back, yeah, and then and then copper tape. Um, and then as for flora or gemma, I see that you commented on the flora or gemma video. So it really depends on what you want the LEDs to do. For a simple uh, digital switch, which would be like by contacting the door opening and closing, yeah. then a gemma would be perfectly fine. If you want to do like microphone sound stuff or any anything with an analog sensor that requires calibration, you might want to upgrade to a flora or if you have lots and lots of digital inputs and outputs. Yeah, and you could go crazy. You could have like a Raspberry Pi driving an HDMI display. You could go nuts. You could go nuts. But I, to start simple, I would say get the Chibitronic starter pack, then maybe yeah. a gemma to control, to program your own LED patterns and upgrade from there. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. That sounds like a fun project. Next up, dear Miss Becky, I'm altering the floor Villa project to sew into a dress. Do you have any specific tips for changing the project? Or should I do all the same things as floor Villa with no specific alterations to the existing process? Thanks, Alice. Cool project idea, Alice. Um, I would say since the floor umbrella um, has a very, the umbrella is very structured and the LEDs are attached to the umbrella um, that doesn't move a whole lot. It has a very known movement pattern. Um, the only modification I would think you'd have to make is making the wires a different length so they fit. I'm assuming you're going to try to make the LEDs like down the side, like a yeah. like an umbrella shaped skirt. Um, so make the wires longer to accommodate for how big around it needs to go. And then um, you need to, since gravity is not your friend in a, in this scenario you have to really anchor the neopixel strips like by the sheathing not like don't hang them by the wires that are attaching them because then yeah. the wires might the neopixel strip isn't designed to hang without support so yeah. with sewing um, anchor in the sheathing so that it's got some really great strain relief and otherwise I think that's probably good okay let us know how it goes please show us pictures Alice all right the video it is now time to give away a copy of getting started with oh Adafruit Flora. I just have my hands full with something. I, yeah. I don't know what it could be. How do how do people um, get into this hat? Oh, sure. If you ask a question about wearables to Adafruit or me on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, the live show during the show, and the Adafruit blog, I will catch it, I'll take a screenshot of it, I will yeah. answer it on the show, and I'll put your name in this hat to <laughs> win a prize. It's the only one we don't know because it's live and it goes by and, there's, and it doesn't stick around forever. And so that's the only no. one we don't know. And I can't look at no. the phone at the same time. Complicated. Well, I also don't look at Facebook, so. No, but it looks at you. 
It does look at me <laughs> so much. No, I'm it's, saying I don't look for where I look at Facebook, yeah. but I'm saying I don't look at where Facebook yeah. for wearable electronics yeah, questions. But it's looking at all of um, it. Phil, would you do the honors today? Yeah, okay. Here we go. All right. So Since I only have one hand, I don't know why. Yeah, we can get you a 3D printed hand that'll just hold it at all times. Right here next to my face? That's what o I would like. Octo Becky. Okay. <laughs> and the winner is the little nerd that could. Yay! Congratulations! For the Walker Project. Oh, nice. That's, that's awesome. Perfect. Yeah, so you can figure out all kinds of schemes for your locker yeah. with your Getting Started with Flora book. Just email support at adafruit.com to claim your prize, and we'll mail that right out to you. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. I'll, also, I'll send you a message on YouTube. Also. All right. A um, little reminder, of course, the code syllable all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. 10% off everything that's Adam's. Yeah, and um, another reminder tonight, Show and tell. If yeah. you have a project to show off, all you have to do is go to the Adafruit Google Plus page, find the announcement for the show and tell, ask yeah. to be added to the circle, then you'll be invited tonight and every Wednesday night at 7.30 for the show and tell, and you can show off your project kind of like this. My yeah. project, should I come on the show and tell tonight? Yeah, sure, you can show it off. Oh, I, I'm going to that event with Alicia. You so can't, can't show it off. <laughs> but um, no, I'll no. leave it here and you can show it off. Yeah. And, um, uh, you can show off your project. It's a super fun club to hang out with and um, very yeah. uplifting and just just fun times hanging out, showing and off your project. And then... In case you're wondering how long we've been doing the show and tell, we've been doing it for four years in a row. In case you're wondering. I think, I think it's one of the longest running Google Hangouts shows on the internet. Can so, you can you guys know about any other Google Hangouts so shows that are longer running? Here's the problem. It's so the only longest running thing. <laughs> no, okay, speaking of, ask an engineer. Okay. Six years old. It's six years old. It's so, pre-YouTube. So this is a problem. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Let me tell you that. I'll, I'll break the fourth wall. Let me tell you the problem. Um, the, the problem is that we're so weird that people can't look at us. It's like it, they, can't un, they, they will not acknowledge that we have a show that's been on for four years and six years. You'd think this would be the biggest deal in the world. If some dopey dude had some stupid startup show, it would completely, oh my god, I can't believe you've done it twice. Yeah. There's an award. Yeah. So it's we're so weird. So that's why it's this, cool. we like this being is why weird. this is fun for us this because we only so by the way, when you get ignored like that, you know what the thing to focus on? The community and the customers. So that's the only yeah, thing. Yeah, well about. you pay attention to who's paying attention to you and yeah. our community is great and who yeah. cares if YouTube only now is just sort of catching on. No, because. no, it doesn't even matter. Like, <laughs> YouTube, YouTube, YouTube's fine, but I, I watch articles about like like false starts. Yeah. And shows that really that no one does it consistently. Right. And they get all this media attention emphasis. for the beginning, and then it trails yeah. off, and nobody so hears about years, it. So six years, like if someone started now, right now, it would be um, twenty. I mean, like we're talking about like a really long period of time. Yeah. Like twenty twenty one. Yeah, twenty twenty one. Before you even ca caught up. Yeah. We would have to die, and you'd have to do a show every single week for six years. That's how that's how challenging it is. Yeah. So, yeah, um, Ask an Engineer started on UStream is now on both UStream and YouTube. Don't yeah. don't miss the uh, sixth birthday anniversary episode tonight yeah. at eight o'clock, following yeah, yeah. Show and Tell, and then uh, tomorrow is three uh, D Hangouts, which last week celebrated its first birthday. Yeah. Anniversary. This is gonna go on for a long time too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's great. Like, Noam Pedro breakdown, CAD techniques, material yeah. problems, like failed prints. They talk about community projects and 3D printing and yeah. 3D printing news. And and it's entertaining, enlightening, and educational yeah. every Thursday. Um, and it's not live. It's it's uh, You can watch, watch it. It gets released on the YouTube channel. So if yeah. you're not subscribed, if you're not one of the lucky 100,000 subscribers we have yeah. already, um, if you subscribe on YouTube, all it does is like you have customizable notification preferences. You can get an email when we upload a video if you want. You can get an email when we start a live stream so you never forget. Or you can not yeah. have any of those things and just and just have clicked the subscribe button to help us out. Yeah. Um, you like know, it, it's fun too because um, every time I get a new weird device, so I, I have a Blu-ray player that only does two things. I play Star Trek Next Generation on Blu-ray. Yeah, of course you do. Play, and yeah. Then, and then plays Hackers on Blu-ray, which just y came out. Yeah, and so that's next week at the birthday, problem, right? Yeah, the problem with uh, Sony is, uh, or YouTube, is they used to allow you to watch YouTube on it, but when I updated the firmware, they removed it, so you can't watch YouTube via the Blu-ray player anymore. Why? Because there's Because like, of the smart TV deals? Who knows? Because Sony makes smart TVs, don't who, they? Who knows, yeah. It's gotta be some contract thing, oh, right? Yeah, it's like, or, or is, No, right? before I upgraded, could watch. Could Weird. So, like, yeah, because so, I have YouTube on my smart TV. Yeah, so it's fun to do things like watch the YouTube channel on, I, like I have Apple TV, stuff like that. Yeah, on my Xbox, I, yeah. I can watch on my Xbox, but I, I generally don't. Yeah, okay. All right, well that's it for the show this week. Guys, I'm just so excited about this silver play button. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell if you liked it or not. It's I was just so, kind of, uh, I, just I, really like, like, I wonder if Becky likes this. I just really like shiny things and also yeah. like, 
I don't know. Anyway, okay. thanks, guys. Um, we'll what's be back again. Next, what's the next milestone? A million subscribers? It's a million subscribers, and it's a gold play button. And then if we get 10 million subscribers, it's a diamond play button. Yeah. All right. I'll we have a ways to go, so if you're not subscribed, please oh. do it. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, we'll work on it. I'll work on it. Okay. I know. It's going to take a couple more years of work, but we got it. Um, thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with more wearable electronics. Um, and, um, yeah, I don't know. Post That's up it. questions. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye -bye, everybody.